This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Work Less and to Do More. Today, we're going to address the question of when to shut down a small business. We learn a lot at school and at college about how to do things so that we can get more. But what they don't teach us is when to rein things in. After all, if you're going to live an extraordinary life of working less and doing more, you need to know when enough is enough. For example, one pet unicorn is great. Ten pet unicorns is even better. But a hundred unicorns? Too much. You can't take that much fertilizer to market each week, and unicorn burgers aren't yet approved by the FDA. Listener Andy's business doesn't involve unicorns. Now, I don't know what it does involve, maybe knitting exciting underwear, but I'm fairly sure there are no unicorns. Andy wrote in and asked, how do you know when it's time to pull the plug on a small business? New listeners may not know this, but when I'm not being the get it done guy, my secret identity is as a Harvard MBA serial entrepreneur and executive coach. So my answer comes from a combination of firsthand experience, advising other entrepreneurs, and of course, drinking too much coffee and not being fully responsible for what my fingers are typing. First of all, know your affordable loss. There's a wonderful concept from entrepreneurship research called affordable loss. That's how much money, time, reputation, and opportunity cost you're prepared to lose when you go into a project. For example, you might decide that you're willing to risk $50,000 of your retirement savings on your new venture, but no more than that. If you didn't set an affordable loss in advance for your business, you may have found yourself adding money a little bit at a time, and if that's the case, stop now and decide now how much in total you think you're willing to risk on your business in total. That's your affordable loss. Now that you know your affordable loss, whether you knew it in advance when you started the business or whether you just discovered it now, Add up the money that you've put into the business so far. If you put more money into the business than your affordable loss, then you have a decision to make. Do you believe that you've learned enough so far that you would be willing to set a new affordable loss going forward, to put in more time, more money, more reputation, and more opportunity cost? If so, decide how much. Set your affordable loss and give yourself that much more runway. But if you decide not, then it may well be time to pull the plug. Beware of sunk costs. The reason that we decide on the affordable loss up front is the dastardly sunk cost fallacy. A sunk cost is money that you've already spent. When deciding to move forward, you should not consider your sunk costs in the equation. The only thing to consider is how much additional you have to put in going forward and how much return you believe you're going to get. Suppose you're trying to build a transmatter ray that can let you transport gold bars out of the local bank vault. You set an affordable loss of $5,000 total that you're willing to spend, and you've spent it all, and it isn't quite working yet. The gold bars seem to seem to liquefy on their way out, and they end up smelling like cumin. You figure that with another $500, you can finish the transmatter ray and steal $10,000 worth of gold bars. At the same time, you have another opportunity to buy $500 worth of time travel remote vision equipment, see tomorrow's winning lottery number, and win $11,000 in the lottery. Either way, right now, you've already spent $5,000 and you have nothing to show for it except a Ziploc bag full of cumin-smelling X-Gold bars. Going forward, you can spend $500 and get $10,000 by finishing your transmatter ray, or you can spend $500 and get $11,000 in the lottery. When you put it like that, of course, the answer is obvious. Abandon the bank robbery and use the $500 to win tomorrow's lottery. In the middle of the decision, however, the sunk costs call like the sirens call to Odysseus. You think, oh, you know, I've put so much money into my transmatter ray so far, I can't abandon it now. Just another $500 and I can complete the heist. When deciding if you've put enough into your business, ignore those sunk costs. But let's say your business is making money, so the issue isn't that you hit your affordable loss. Maybe you're making money, but it's no longer fun. You just don't care about it well, it might be best to call it a day. It does no one good for you to be tied to a business that makes your life miserable. But why shut it down if it's making money? If it's big enough, find a business broker and sell it. There are a lot of young entrepreneurs launching search funds just looking for profitable businesses to grow. But even if it's not big enough to sell, if it makes enough to hire someone to run it for you, consider doing that. If you're paying them a salary, there may not be enough left over for you, so you may still need to find another job. But if you chose your manager well, they may grow the business to the point where it eventually does generate enough income to give you income and you won't have to work another job. If it's just money, experiment more. If the business is only making you miserable because it's unprofitable, the issue may just be that you need to beef up your sales efforts. Or maybe you need a bit of marketing to figure out how to get a better product market fit. 
If you decide to stick with it, make up a list of possible sales and marketing experiments to try. Give each experiment an affordable loss. Remember that? Of course. Give it an affordable loss and get to learning. Do several experiments, and once you find the combination of product, message, and market that can make money, then start planning to scale it into a giant, world-spanning, multinational commercial empire. <laughs> Deciding to close a business is tough. Andy, it might just be that you need to tweak a few things and it will start going well, in which case, design and execute experiments to do the tweaks and find the ones that work. But regardless of your sunk costs, if you've spent more than your affordable loss in time, money, reputation, or opportunity cost, it might be time to move on to something new. Maybe a fertilizer company. Maybe there's a market for it among politicians. After all, it is an election year. This is Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. I run programs to help people have extraordinary lives and extraordinary careers. If you want to know more, visit steverrobbins.com, that's S-T-E-V-E-R-R-O-B-B-I-N-S dot com, or join my personal mailing list by texting Get It Done to 33444. You'll also get a free copy of my secret book chapter on how to build relationships that help you succeed. Work less, do more, and have a great life. <laughs>